Today, the church celebrates a great feast, one of the great solemnities in which we honor our Blessed Mother Mary. And it is a great day for our Blessed Mother and for the church and for the Fathers of Mercy. And I'm mainly going to reflect with you about why it is a glorious day for Our Lady and then more briefly about why it's important for the whole church and for the Fathers of Mercy. Mary is assumed into heaven, taken body and soul into heaven. Mary has experienced what we all look forward to. Mary has experienced her body being with her soul, resurrected in the kingdom of heaven. St. Peter Canisius, great doctor of the church, said this is the greatest of Mary's feast days because this is when everything was brought to its final culmination. What it was all geared toward was Mary coming to heaven. Now our central belief about our Blessed Mother, the central dogma, you might say, relating to our Blessed Mother is the fact that she is the mother of God. That when God, the Son, the second person, the Trinity, chose to come into our world, he became man. He took his flesh from Mary. He became man in her womb. From the beginning of the universe, God had this in mind. He had Mary in mind and he planned for her to be his mother. Knowing that he was going to come to redeem us, he knew he needed to take upon himself our human nature, and he chose Mary. He predestined her for that special role. And everything that led up to her giving her consent at the Annunciation, becoming the mother of God, was a preparation for that. So her immaculate conception, Mary being conceived without original sin, being preserved from ever being touched by the original sin, which what Father Rosan said was the first and greatest work of God's mercy, that was in light of the fact that she was going to be the mother of God. Her birth, her being taken as a child, presented in the temple, which we celebrate every November 21st, the feast of the presentation of Mary, her choice to remain a virgin, which was an amazing thing for a Jewish girl to do because the greatest hope a Jewish girl could ever have would be that she would be the mother of the Messiah. And when Mary chose a life of consecrated virginity, she was, humanly speaking, giving up any hope of being the mother of the Messiah. And yet that was precisely a preparation for her to be the mother of the Messiah, the mother of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Then after Our Lady became the mother of God and she carried Jesus in her womb and she gave birth to him and she nursed him and she raised him and she helped him begin his public ministry when she asked him to perform the miracle at the wedding of Cana. And she stood at the foot of the cross as the new Eve, by the tree, with the new Adam, overcoming the fall of the first Adam and Eve. She was praying in the upper room in, the, in Pentecost with the disciples, showing herself already the mother of the body of Christ, the mother of the church. All of this was leading to the final joy that at the end of her life, she was taken up, body and soul, into heaven. Now the church, specifically Pope Pius XII, chose not to say whether Mary died or not. But the preponderance of the opinion of the church fathers is that she chose to undergo death, like her divine son did, and then was raised up. Her body raised up, reunited with her soul, and she was taken into heaven, her assumption. There's an ancient legend. We don't have to believe these ancient legends, but I think it's beautiful. 
that when they knew the end of Mary's life was coming, the apostles that still remained, who had not already been martyred, like St. James, they all came to Ephesus to be there with Mary at her deathbed. But Thomas didn't make it back from India. And so Mary died and was buried. And then St. Thomas showed up. And he wanted one more time to look upon the face of mom, of everyone's mother, Mary. And they went to the tomb and found the tomb empty. Her body, her soul, she had been raised up, assumed into heaven, and there was a scent of heaven there in the tomb. Again, we don't have to believe that legend, but what a beautiful thought. The apostles, knowing because of Thomas coming late, knowing that Mary had already experienced the resurrection. And that brings us to the second part of this reflection. Why is this feast day so important to the whole church? Because every time we pray the creed, whether the Apostles' Creed with the rosary or the chaplet, or the Nicene Creed that we pray at Mass, we profess to believe in the resurrection of the body, the resurrection of the dead, that at the end of time, our bodies are going to be raised and are going to be reunited with our souls. And if we are in heaven, they are going to experience the joy, the glory of heaven with our souls. All of the saints, besides our Blessed Mother, you could say they're not completely there yet. They're in heaven in their soul, but we're not our soul, and we're not our body. We are our body and soul together. We are neither materialists who think that the body is, is all there is, nor are we spiritualists that think the soul is all there is or all that matters and the body is just a, a shell or a vehicle. That's how people get into the, the strange things of transmigration of souls and reincarnation, thinking that, that we're just our soul and our body is just a shell. And it can go from one shell to another. Or today, the transgender ideology, which basically says we're just our soul and our body is just like a car that we drive. And, you know, I ordered a Ford, but I got a, a Dodge instead. No, we are body and soul together. And so our Blessed Mother, who is the first and greatest member of the body of Christ, is already in heaven, resurrected. Her body is glorified and united to her soul as we look forward to for ourselves and our loved ones. She is gone, and if you will, prepared the way for us after her divine Son. And so this celebration of her assumption is a foretaste and a promise of the fact that someday we will be body and soul in the kingdom of heaven at the end of the world. And for all eternity, we will be body and soul with God. Finally, this great solemnity is a very special day for the Fathers of Mercy. No, it's not our main Marian feast day. Our main day is the Immaculate Conception, the, the day in which we celebrate, honor the greatest work of God's mercy, Mary being conceived without original sin. But nonetheless, the assumption is very important to us because this is the feast day that most of our members have made either their first vows or their final vows. Those of us who are of the older generation of those alive, we're not the old guard that have all passed on, but those of us that came in before 1997, we made our first vows, most of us, on this day. So today, for example, Father David celebrates 37 years as of consecrated religious life. Father Lou and I both celebrate 30 years since our religious profession. Just as your wedding day 
your wedding anniversary is a very important day for all married people, so the day of our vows is a very special day for all religious. And so many of us made our first vows and many who came later have made their final vows on this day. And so I ask you to pray for all the fathers of mercy, whether this is our anniversary or not, that we would be faithful, we would be ever renewed in the profession of obedience, poverty, and chastity that we made for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, that we would be faithful as religious and as priests, and specifically as fathers of mercy to our profession and to the charism that God has given us, that we will truly be men of mercy, icons, living icons of God's mercy, bringing his mercy to all of his prodigal sons and daughters. Pray for us, and may we all come one day to be with Jesus and Mary in the kingdom of heaven, to experience that joy, that glory that we heard Mary sing about in her Magnificat, that we know that she experienced on the day of her assumption, and that the church celebrates today and in a very real day, way for the next week until we celebrate her queenship on the 22nd. Let us rejoice as we look forward to joining her in heaven, body and soul. God love you.